I don't think that leadership came naturally to Mary Lee Cagle. She was born in North Alabama and she says, describes herself as a timid, shy girl. She had a call to preach as a child, but she suppressed that call and in fact she did not even act on it until she was in her early 30s. At different points along the way she tried to sublimate it. Uh, she did so initially by interpreting it as a call to mission work. Later, when she grew to adulthood, she became a school teacher. And then finally, she married an evangelist, Robert Lee Harris. And she felt that by assisting his work, she would somehow do what God had called her to do. So it really wasn't until Harris lay dying that she finally said yes to the call to preach. And after he had died, she then went out. Uh, she took the manual that he had written for the the congregation in Milan, Tennessee, a congregation called the New Testament Church of Christ. And on the basis of that manual, she began organizing other churches in the area. Her leadership style developed slowly. Uh, once she began preaching, she eventually got over what she called the man-fearing spirit. She had a particular episode in Fulton, Kentucky, when she was preaching in a revival. And the fear that had gripped her for much of her life just left. Uh, during that revival and it never came back. And from that point on, she was rather fearless as a preacher. Uh, she went into West Texas in December of 1895. She organized three churches there after a series of revivals. And then in the following year, she began to spend more and more time in West Texas and nurturing a growing circle of churches there. Timothy Smith says that she developed a superintending role. Uh, she was sort of the mother of holiness in West Texas, according to Charlie McConnell, uh, who edited the Texas Christian Advocate. To be an effective leader, one must know when to compromise. And this was a lesson that Mary Lee Cagle had to learn. In her early ministry, she was very rigid about following the doctrines and the, the usages of her first husband, Robert Lee Harris. Uh, the manual that Harris had written was her guidebook, and one of the things that Harris insisted upon was that pouring was the only scriptural mode of baptism. She defended his theology vigorously, including in the merger negotiations with the group from East Texas led by C.B. Jernigan. But finally, she realized that if she was going to be part of a new and wider holiness denomination, she would have to be more flexible, and so she did become flexible. Had she not learned to compromise, then one of the most remarkable scenes in her life would never have occurred. Some seven or eight years later, when she and her husband were in New Mexico, they went into a community where clergy did not live, and very few clergy even passed through. As they preached in the area, they found out that there were a lot of Christian people but many of them had never been baptized, and so they uh, called for a baptism service, and people came from miles around. And in her autobiography, she says that on that particular day, they baptized by every mode possible, pouring, sprinkling, immersion, and they baptized babies. And she ends her summary by saying, and the shouts of the redeemed echoed throughout the hills. So she learned, she learned to, to, to compromise in certain areas and, and this benefited her and the church.